Clans in the highlands and islands were often in conflict with each other, fighting over land or livestock. They were fearsome warriors, and I'm about to meet a man who knows all about their fighting skills. But before I can learn to fight like a Highlander, I'm going to have to dress like one. Storyteller Ray Owens is folding the traditional Highland plaid. The pleats he puts in are to help the plaid hang and are actually called kilting, where the word kilt comes from. I have to lie down on the plaid and have it belted around me to keep it on. The extra bit of cloth cleverly created by the folding could be used as pockets at the side or at the back for carrying supplies. The spare material was good protection from the harsh Highland weather and one useful aspect of the plaid was that it could be removed very quickly to allow the Highlander to charge into battle unencumbered by wet, heavy cloth. A screaming, half-naked Highlander charging towards you would have been quite a sight. But I think I'll keep my kilt on while Ray shows me some of the other weapons the clans would have used. So, Ray, can you, uh, can you tell me what uh, weapons you've got there? Certainly. Let me just put this down here. First of all, this is a lowland crossword. Mm -hmm. Stick it in the ground there. And this is a musket, mostly used by the British Army at the time, but uh, we would use them as well whenever we mm. got a chance. I'll put but it down. wasn't the preferred weapon of the Highlanders, no, was it? No, 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 it wasn't. The preferred weapon of the Highlanders was the great sword that you have there. The claymore. Claymore simply means great, great sword. They were used in many of the early battles. The last battle where any number of these were used was at Killacranky with Bonnie Dundee in the year 1689. But after that, the Highlanders wanted to have shields to protect themselves against the musket fire. So they had these targes instead. And of course, you can't carry a targe and a double-handed sword. Mm -hmm. So let me just show you how you might use these weapons. Do you want to lift that up over your head? Now, so it's a simple hacking sword, great mm -hmm. cleaving sword. There's no finesse involved at all in fighting with it. I have a, as I said, a targe, which also turns into a weapon. Nice spike fits in the front here. Mm -hmm. And I hold my dirk in the same hand, protruding here, and of course, my broad sword. Mm -hmm. So so your dirk, is, you, if you can just see it, is just poking out the bottom absolutely. there. Absolutely. Now, I can... I now that's can quite sharp, that. Watch yourself now. It's very sharp. <laughs> it's supposed to be sharp. So I would come charging in towards you. You would yeah. charge, right. hit me with that great this sword. This is just a slashing movement, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Down like that. Well, I would drop down and I could remove your left leg here. Yeah. Because you're totally disarmed. Now I've pushed that aside. Right. Try it again and I'll show you a different method. This one, I stay up and I head for your shoulder here, yep. cutting right through your collarbone and right to your heart Tasty. in a single blow. Mm. So, deadly weapons all. Of course, yeah. that's a much heavier sword than mine, and if you can yeah. get in fast, you might even be able to shatter my targe with it. Yeah, so if I... I mean, I, I'm, I'm right-handed. I'm a right-handed Highlander, right? Sure. If I, you, I can see your targe there, so I'm going to come across this way, am I not? Absolutely. Slash, that's... You, slash you that way. Sure. Yeah. If you could, that would be a great way to do it. Now, I've got, I've got a way to fight back there, too. If I can catch your sword in yeah. here, look at the ears or lags I have in these. Catches your sword. Oh, and tw that right. I can take it out you of your hand. You can disarm me. But this is a very heavy sword. I, I assume that's the re it's so heavy that once the the momentum of this thing crashing down, it's, it's going to be pretty It's going to break right through the collarbone and cut yeah. you right down to the heart. Yeah, or or if you if you if you stop me with your sword, I mean the weight of this thing, I can feel it's like I know. It could, could keep going. Absolutely, you're much stronger than me, right? I would try, <laughs> but you would try hard to fight it back. But yeah. these this is how these weapons would be used: individual man-to-man -man fighting. Highlanders could never be trained as disciplined soldiers. Highland clan warfare was always man against man. And as we said earlier, the plaid, of course, itself plays a very important role in battles. Mm. Because when you're charging without that plaid on, what a frightening sight that must have been. 2,000 semi-naked, hairy Highlanders charging down the hill directly towards you, screaming at the top of their voices. Mm. No wonder most of the enemy just turned and ran away. Whilst the people lived in thatched homes, their chieftains were housed in magnificent castles. These ultimate symbols of power were the battleships of their day, used for defense and to show just how powerful each clan was. 
I'm traveling south now to one of the most famous castles